In this short video, we're going to introduce the Kilner fermentation set and its benefits, and we're going to make some kimchi. One of the things you'll need when making kimchi or fermenting anything in that case is a very big pan. This is going to be useful for mixing and for adding salt and stirring in paste as a, when it comes to kimchi, for example. And also it's a good place to leave the cabbage or any other vegetable to salt and for the moisture to be drawn out. And this is fantastic for what we're going to do here today and to pre-mix your ingredients to put in the three litre kilner fermentation set where we're going to leave our produce to ferment for a good five days before we inspect and taste it. I'm going to put this to one side for a minute and we're going to chop some cabbage. So as I said before this is a Napa cabbage or Chinese cabbage. I haven't personally experimented with doing it with any other sort of cabbage but I'm sure it will be fine. I'm going to take the bottom off here. I don't need this root. Put that to one side as well. And I'm going to cut it right down the middle. This leaf is not looking very happy either. I'm going to go into quarters here. This is how I like to do it, but honestly it doesn't matter. You're going to cover it in salt and leave it for at least 40 minutes before it's ready. And when you come back after that time, we'll show you, you'll see that the moisture has been drawn out of the cabbage and it'll be in the bottom of the pan, in our big pan in this example. So it's in quarters and I'm just going to start at the top. Uh, I particularly like kimchi because of its enormous health benefits. It's very, very rich in probiotic cultures and it's fantastically good for your gut health. And it's the sort of thing that you would start making now and keep in your pantry or somewhere cool and dry and have as a side dish for the winter. You might be wondering why a prepping site is doing a video about kimchi. Well, this is a form of prepping in my, in my eyes and in Christians I know. We decided that food preparation and preservation was the most important thing when it comes to being prepared. I'm just going to cut the ends off this daikon. I'm going to grate it all the way down. Right, I'm going to put this daikon to one side and I'm going to put the cabbage into the big pan and then we're going to add the salt. So we have our cabbage chopped and it's in the big pan ready for salting. Uh, I've got a sea salt here and it's uh, best to use something that has some life in it. A table salt will be completely dead and not very good in producing good bacteria, which is going to happen in the fermentation process. I would suggest a sea salt. If you can't get that, then maybe a Himalayan salt or a pink salt is also good. I'm just going to add this salt. I'm going to chuck it all in and we're going to massage the cabbage, cabbage squish it, crush it, push it against the sides, make sure it's got a good coating of salt all over each little piece. Okay, so I've been doing this for about five minutes now and you might be able to hear the difference and you can certainly see it on my hands, I would imagine, the moisture that's already coming out of this cabbage is incredible. And this is just from a small amount of massaging and pushing the cabbage against the sides and squishing it as well on my hands. And there's a good example of the water that gets released from a cabbage when you just add salt. So we're going to do this for a little bit longer and I'll show you what it looks like. It's already gone down in volume a lot so there's 
a lot less now in there. And you can see that moisture starting to pool already at the bottom. So what I quite like to do, actually this is a good way to do it, push all of your cabbage to one side, all the little pieces from the side there. And then we'll leave that to sit and the moisture will run off the cabbage down to the other side. And that needs to sit like that. I'm going to put the lid on now. It needs to sit like that for about 40 minutes to an hour. Whilst that's happening, I'm going to cut the chives and the carrots. Okay, and that's that. Uh, when the cabbage has had 40 minutes to an hour, I'm going to come back, we're going to rinse the cabbage in a sieve. I'm going to rinse all the salt off as much as you can. And then we're going to come back and make a paste and then mix it all together. We're going to use ginger, garlic, We're going to add our chili flakes as well and we'll put it into our mini food processor here. A bit of fish sauce as well. The fish sauce is going to help with the acidity and give a lovely flavour. And then we're going to have a paste. We might need a little bit of water if it's looking a bit thick, but we'll have a look in a second. So this has had one go through the whizzer and it is indeed looking a bit thick. I'm going to add a little bit of water this time and not fish sauce, but you can use either one. That's looking much better, really nice consistency. So the cabbage is now rinsed, uh, we added it to the sieve and when you're rinsing it, it's really important to give it that final squeeze. And what we're going to do now is add the cabbage back to the big pan. We're going to add our carrots, chives and daikon and we're going to add our paste. Mix it all together so it's every single bit of vegetable has a bit of the paste on, on it, coated nicely. And then we're going to add all of that to our fermentation kit and um, yeah I'll explain a little bit about that. Okay, so now we've mixed in the paste with the cabbage, uh, the daikon, the carrots and the chives and we are going to add it to the fermentation set in a little while. Just have a look at that, see the consistency. Everything nicely coated with the paste and looking like an amazing colour. Alright, so we're going to add our kimchi to the Kilner fermentation set and super wide mouth jar, it's nice and easy to do and we're just going to go spoonful at a time. You can do this with your hands but I would wear gloves if you're going to do that. Now at the moment there isn't enough juice to submerge the vegetables in this kimchi mix but in my short experience after about half an hour to 40 minutes come back and check on it again and it's most likely that there's some liquid has formed and will cover the top of the vegetables and what is going to help keep the vegetables submerged after that is the ceramic weights that come with this fermentation set. Once these are added, it's also a good platform to give a last bit of pressure. Both hands on, uh, both on there, and you see that juice starting to form already. Now, the silicon lid. It used to be that this lid on the fermentation set was made of wood, and they recently changed it to silicon, and it's much much better, easier to put on easier to take off and it creates a perfect seal every time. So add the lid, squish it down 
and then you take your water lock. So water lock goes in the hole in the top, push it down, add the centerpiece, which is the float, put it on top, just add a tiny bit of water, just so the float starts to rise up, and add the lid back on. This way, you don't ever have to lift this lid off, and you can be rest assured your fermentation will be safe to eat and happen properly.